one of the hardest industries. Uh, the statistic is 87% of all real estate agents don't go into their fifth year. So that's basically wow. nine out of 10 drop out. Wow. Nine out of 10. Yeah. Right. And, which is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, what other industry have you heard of oh, that, that doesn't enter into their fifth year in the biz? Right. Wow. So just to give you an idea of how cutthroat it is, um, I'd say the biggest misconception is that it's easy. One thing I kind of chuckle mm. at is when a lot of people will reach out to me like, hey, how, you know, how do I get started? We touched upon this at dinner. Yeah. But not only that, like, hey, I, I want to make this my side gig. I want to do it on the side. <laughs> I laugh, I'm like, unless you're coming from a billionaire family and you have these insane connections yeah. and you don't really need to work that hard, uh, there's no side gig with real estate. It's all in and yeah. you're going to be working more than your corporate job 40 hours a week. I can guarantee yeah. that if you want to be successful. Yeah. What's up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris. This is the Breadwinner Podcast. Glad to have you here. Also glad to have a special guest for today's episode, Mr. Dex Lipovich. And he is uh, someone that I got to know very well this past weekend, but really didn't know at all before then. And uh, that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> That's how we roll, baby. <laughs> That's super awkward. Um, but man, I'm so glad to have you on, uh, Dex. Uh, he is more known, or let's say more infamously known as Dex and the City, which is the most brilliant marketing of all time. And I love that branding. Uh, but man, Dex, come on and tell everybody a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and what your main focus is right now. And we'll dive right in. Tyler, thanks so much, man. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah, as you said, we didn't really know each other too well other than on social media, but we, we really dived in and uh, spent a solid full day together, right? <laughs> we did. Hunting we did. the beach, we did a little brunch, yep. head on up to uh, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood. It was awesome hanging out with you and TJ. Absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, for hanging out with of me course. that day. Got a lot of great rapport building. Uh, for everyone, my name is Dex Lipovich uh, on all social media channels, Dex in the city underscore. Um, I'm a real estate investor, developer, and agent on both coasts of uh, California. Originally from California, but my main focus right now is New York City, hence the name Dex in the City. <laughs> uh, spit on the popular culture TV show, Sex in the City. Um, and it's funny, I actually got that name. I didn't, I didn't give that name to myself. It was given to me um, just based on my love for touring people around New York, people that had ever been. Um, I'd been living there at that time for about four years uh, and a good friend of mine kind of dropped it and and that light bulb went off in my head and i was like damn i gotta brand this That's awesome. i don't remember what my what my instagram handle was prior to that um so locked in as many social media accounts and and kind of ran with that in terms of having that as my real estate brand um and it's actually gotten to the point where obviously you know my last name but a lot of my clients and people that connect with me <laughs> through social um don't you know kind of find out my last name uh, maybe let's say on the first appointment or things like that. They, yeah. And I had to ask, I was like, city. Hey man, what is your last name? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I've just been really going hard on it. And, and even, uh, even when I was down in Miami, I was like Dex and Dex in the beach <laughs> in LA, I'm Dex in the Hills. Yes. Um, I got a, uh, I got a very unique 800 acre property out in Fiji that we actually just signed an exclusive for this, this week. Wow. Um, and that's going to be my decks in the South Pacific. Yeah. So I'm like, kind of like <laughs> branching off. Yeah. I'm, I'm branching awesome. off from it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of, uh, in terms of brokerage, my main focus is in Manhattan. Um, I do more investing on the West coast and yeah, man. Awesome. So let's, let's kind of get back to, uh, the beginning. So you look like a basketball player because yeah. when I, first saw you i was like holy crap i had no idea you're like freaking like what six 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 so let's six, take it six. all the way back to basketball because you've got some interesting stories there um because you were competitive uh, and you've got Very a freaking ultra. extremely competitive family which is awesome so let's kind of yeah. take it back there because what i found is most people um a lot of what has ultimately become their success has stemmed from that competitive nature all the way back to sports growing up. So what was basketball like for you growing up? So originally it was actually soccer. My dad played was pro. It? So okay. I actually went, I actually went uh, against the grain thinking he thought we were all going to end up playing uh, soccer like him. That was kind of his dream. <laughs> actually his dream was for us to play any sport. He's five, nine though. <laughs> and so once we, once we pass that, um, and, and you know, the three, I have two other brothers. So the three sons kind of boosted up in height. 
Uh, I don't know. Basketball was really always my passion. How tall is your mom? Uh, my mom is actually five nine as well. So it's wow, what they're in the not, world? like she's t- yeah she's tall. But she's not like you know six six sun tall. Wow. Um, it's kind of funny. My dad actually loves it. He brags about it all the time. Uh-huh. It's just like six 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 five six four and then him. I love it. Uh, so he makes a lot of milkman jokes, but um, <laughs> but yeah, for me, I mean, like you said, people that are super competitive in business, I absolutely hate to lose. I was watching the Cavs Warriors game one, and you know, I'm going for LeBron, and it honestly, it ruined my night just because I'm so ultra competitive. Yep. Um, even when I'm watching other people compete, right? Um, but for me, man, yeah, I, I was that was a huge influence for me growing up. It was really my life probably till age 19 until I actually moved to New York and fully embraced the business world. And I, I bring a lot of that edge to uh, real estate as well. Cause now, I mean, it's definitely an eat what you kill industry. It's probably one of the hardest uh, industries to make it in, especially true. out in New York, the ultra competitive, oh, yeah. uh, the shark tank is what I call it out there. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. So where, where do you fall in line with your brothers? Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest. I okay. set the example. Got it. Um, yeah, I think we were touching upon this earlier. I didn't let him beat me for a long time. <laughs> that is awesome. And so let's go right into, uh, right into the time when you went into real estate, what was that like? Um, how did that come about? Did you fall into real estate? Yeah. Was real estate something you always had a passion for? Um, how did that all play out? Yeah. So o- always had an interest in it. Uh, I didn't really gain the, the full passion until I, I didn't head first. But initially, I had transferred universities to go to New York um, just because New York, it, it wasn't even a matter of what university I wanted to go to. It was just a matter of getting to New York, living there. So I only applied to New York schools. Um, and right out of college, I got a job in doing software sales at Xerox. I was like 21. Hmm. Um, it was just a means to sort of stay in New York, obviously, ultra expensive city. And uh, I quickly found that inside sales definitely was my thing, or sales in general was my thing, because I hit, by March of that year, I think it was 2013, 2014, I'm sorry, um, I hit 621% of my yearly quota by March. <laughs> so <laughs> like a, wow. I was like a 21-year-old. Unbelievable. Yeah. I thought you said yeah. wasn't. I thought you were saying wasn't my thing. And I was like, oh, of course it wasn't was. my thing. And I was like, oh, was. I was like, oh, my God, 621. That's incredible. Yeah, man. Um, what the so, heck? Yeah, what the I, heck were you doing? Like what? Like what I was, was, going what was hard, the secret man. sauce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I closed the U.S. Court of Appeals, so I was doing like software sales for them. Uh, yeah. The U.S. Court of Appeals and ended up closing like six stations. And it just kind of goes back to what TJ was saying, right? So it's you, you get the appointment over the phone and then you go hard to close them in person. Yeah. But I was twenty one. I think at that time I was twenty two. I just turned twenty two. And the guy thought I was like 30, man. Maybe it's the height. Maybe it's the way I present myself. Yeah. He fl- After the fact, he found out my age. He flipped out. It was like a seven-year-old guy, um, head, of, head of the U.S. Court of Appeals. And that, that one helped a lot. A couple other deals. Um, but And I knew that that really wasn't the end-all, be-all. It was kind of just like a stepping stone. But within nine months of being at the company, because I had started a year prior, uh, I just felt like I had quickly outgrown it needed the next best thing at that time what was really inspiring me was watching million dollar listing because that was like season one yeah um and i really wanted to live that lifestyle and it's kind of funny how this all kind of went full circle for me absolutely um but then i met my future vp uh randomly out walking our dogs and she (laughs) was like why not take the leap of faith and at that point obviously i was like number two in the company um, in my respective field and obviously I'd saved up some money. So I just took the leap of faith. That's awesome. And so you mentioned a million dollar listing and that's like one of the things that people always bring up, um, when, when your name comes up in conversation. Uh, but I, I thought yeah. it was awesome that you said you're more proud of the, uh, wall street journal. Uh, article yes. that you were on the cover. And yes. that's really, man, where I'd love to like kind of hang out for the rest of the podcast on is because of what that really meant in that trust that you're able to build with people. Cause I think that's something that we can it's, really use on this podcast to help someone. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe talk absolutely. about that. Talk about um, the, the wall street journal 
and then uh, we'll kind of wrap on on the whole uh, building trust with others, even if they don't even live in the freaking same country <laughs> as you. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I, thank you so much for bringing that up. By the way, yeah, I'm very, very proud of it. Um, you know, one of the things that I do love about real estate is not only do, does your sphere of influence, right? So your friends become your clients. What the th- aspect that I love about it being a people business or the fact that my clients end up becoming my friends. Maybe it's just the way I am, uh, the positive, welcoming individual that I am, but it almost always ends up happening, right? There's yeah. always that deeper relationship that ends up happening. Because at the end of the day, especially when you're on the buyer side, even on the seller side, they're trusting you, it's selling your greatest asset, your biggest asset at the time. On the buyer side, you really go with the journey huh. on this person, right? Figure out where they want to call home for the next few years. So it, it really goes back to uh, what we were talking about. So building this platform of trust, yep, right? That's it. Uh, I think in, in the real estate industry, so much, I, some people call it smoke and mirrors. A lot of people are very short term thinking and they just want to close this transaction. And I'm actually shocked by it. Yep. That, that they don't think long term. They want to close a transaction. They just want to collect their check, whether it's even a rental or a sale. Hmm. And then from there, they don't continue the relationship on, man. Yeah. We're in the people business at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, for me, you know, I feel like if you're a trusting individual and you just come off like that, and this is what happens when I interview people to work under me as well, as long as I get that sense that I can trust the person, that I feel like they're going to do relatively well in real estate. Obviously, there's other factors that play into it, uh, but I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, and um, it's also the one thing that kind of can get certain real estate agents a bad rap for it. Hmm. I don't know how it is down in South Carolina, but in New York, we don't necessarily, as a collective industry, have the best reputation. Sure, uh, with all the types of press people are getting and things like that, and the real deal. Yeah, um, but I think, I think without trust, man, you don't really have anything because at the end of the day, you're you're facilitating people buying their largest asset at the time. Yeah. and or selling it dude it's it's so, it's so important um that that idea of being impeccable with your word and and following through and doing what you're saying you're going to do when you're going to say when you say you're going to do it um but what you said there was so important because people just don't realize and and i'm thinking even like in your market and in your industry uh the lifetime value of a of a client is insanely high if you treat them right yeah um, not just in the transactions yeah. that you'll receive over a lifetime through re- working with that individual, but the referrals. Like you said, you got that person as a referral from somebody else. Well, chances are you treated that somebody else extremely well, and you did what you were gonna, said you were going to do, and you were extremely trustworthy for them to recommend you uh, to this individual. Uh, but people just don't even pe- – you're right. People are so short-sighted, and all they see is, okay, yeah. I've got a buyer. I found a house. Great. Let me get my commission check. Let me find another buyer. But it's all yeah. about building relationships. And that's something that I've just become so focused on these days is just relationships, relationships, relationships. Because in a down economy, which we'll be in at some point here in the probably not so distant future, relationships mm-hmm. are what hold all the weight. Um, and the relationships are what separates you from the how many how many agents did you say that there were in New York like twenty eight thousand or something crazy? Twenty eight thousand. Yeah, twenty eight thousand. That's funny. I remember that number. Uh, twenty eight thousand freaking real estate agents, which is incredible. <laughs> like to ask you is what's kind of one misconception in general about real estate agents in New York City or maybe about real estate agents that are closing deals in a hour long television show or (laughs) but just what's one what's what's a misconception that when the average person in America thinks about what's going down in the real estate market in New York uh, or just living in New York dealing with real estate uh, that that you would like to uh, set straight for us. Yeah, yeah. It mainly goes in the second one you you touched on, right? Everybody (laughs) kind of sees the glitz and glam of reality TV, Instagram. (laughs) I touched on it a little bit earlier, the smoke and mirrors. Yeah, Uh, It's definitely the hardest city, even though it might be the highest volume in America, the hardest city to make it in real estate and the hardest in one of the hardest industries. Uh, The statistic is 87% of all real estate agents don't go into their fifth year. 
So that's basically wow. nine out of ten dropped out. Wow. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Right? And, which is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, what other industry have you heard of oh, that, that doesn't enter into their fifth year in the biz, right? Wow. So just to give you an idea of how cutthroat it is, um, I'd say the biggest misconception is that it's easy. One thing I kind of chuckle mm -hmm. at is when a lot of people will reach out to me like, hey, how, you know, how do I get started? We touched upon this at dinner. Yeah. But not only that, like, hey, I, I want to make this my side gig. I want to do it on the side. <laughs> I laugh. I'm like, unless you're coming from a billionaire family and you have these insane connections yeah. and you don't really need to work that hard, uh, there's no side gig with real estate. It's all in and yeah. you're going to be working more than your corporate job 40 hours a week. I can yeah. guarantee that if you want to be successful. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, it's a result based business. Um, you get out what you put in for that's, sure. That's but awesome. it can also be very, it can also be very rewarding at the same time. Absolutely. So I don't want to discourage anybody from joining at the end of the day. If, if the passion is there, you'll know right away. Yeah. I mean, I'm walking through the streets of New York, um, even with my friends or with other people, and I'm always looking up at different buildings, yeah. noticing different apartments. Hey, that's an amazing loft, things yeah. like that. Um, the passion's always really been there. I'm fascinated with people's living space. It tells a lot about an individual. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm right where I need to be in terms of uh, in terms of career path. Awesome, man. Well, Definitely. tell everybody where they can find you online so that they can learn more about you, maybe connect with you. And, and like I said, you never know. Um, there could be someone out here uh, that may be in the uh, market for real estate in New York. We've got an incredible, incredible viewership on this uh, <laughs> on this podcast. So where can everybody Absolutely. find you? Absolutely, man. Would love to connect with everybody. On Instagram, it's at Dex and the city underscore. Uh, Facebook, Dex, and then the and sign, uh, the city, and, or my personal Facebook, Dex Lipovich. Okay. And my email is dex at compass.com. Awesome. If Very good. Well, me. man, dude, it's, it's been a pleasure getting to know you better. And dude, kudos to you um, for, for moving from freaking California to New York and just sitting out and saying, like, I'm going to do it. Um, and, you know, like I was telling you about that interview with Drama, he was talking about just the ability to just live comfortably in the city that I know I'm supposed to be in and have friends and have a life and be financially just secure and to be just doing it. Like kudos to you, man. There's, there's nothing cooler than that. Um, especially, uh, where you've been able to do that in, in such a cutthroat, difficult market. So, man, I, I, I have the utmost respect for you and, uh, and I can't wait to, uh, definitely continue our relationship, uh, long term. And I would, uh, really appreciate an invite to the, uh, decks in the South Pacific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been I mean, yet. I'll just I take like a yet. quarter acre. I mean, I just need like a so quarter it's, acre. <laughs> it's, yeah. Hey, man, I would love to build that in. Find a hotel group. So it's perfect for a hotel group. It's actually right next to Red Bull's resort, that, oh, wow. that island that has Red Bull's resort, like wow. two islands down from Tony Robbins' Jeez. resort. That's awesome. uh, it's going to be crazy. I'll be dropping it on social media and YouTube fairly soon. We got the drone footage being filmed right now. That's awesome. Well, very cool, man. Yeah, well, guys, with it, that, this is the Breadwinner Podcast. Dex, thank you so much for being on. And uh, as always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we will see you next time. What's up, guys? If you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.